Hey guys, welcome back to RNG Plays. I am RNG Aaron, and I play video games for you guys. Pretty simple, right? <laughs> well, welcome back. Today, we are actually going to be picking up a game we started off on Twitch for a community challenge. We're going to be playing Dream Daddy. I know it's not the normal uh, indie horror content or Day Dead by Daylight content we put out, but we did start this on Twitch for a community challenge, and I had yet to finish the game. So I wanted to uh, finish it out here on YouTube so everybody could come and enjoy it. If you are just finding us and joining us on Dream Daddy, I do apologize. The first half of the game was played on Twitch, which I do stream. Come check me out three days a week. I mostly play Dead by Daylight and indie horror games on there. Um, other than that, we've started there. We're going to continue here on YouTube, finish it out, see which daddy we find out. But if you do enjoy these videos, you like the content, make sure you click uh, down below. Check out the link for Twitch. Make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, tell me which daddy was your favorite and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post new content as well. Without any further ado, let's get into it. After a long night of very little sleep, I roll out of bed and make myself a pot of coffee. Amanda should be up for school soon. Maybe she'll be willing to talk about whatever's bothering her. About 10 minutes before she's supposed to leave, Amanda comes out of her room and makes a beeline for the freezer. Morning, Amanda. Morning. She drops a frozen waffle into the toaster and slams the freezer door. She won't look at me. Yikes. So, anything going out of school today? Aww. No. Okay. Yeah, let's make sure volume's up. Do you need a ride to school? No. Want some coffee? Amanda pulls the toaster lever up, takes her still frozen burned waffle, uh, freezer burned waffle out before it's finished cooking. Reading's not my best suit all the time with these. <laughs> Sorry, chat. I have to go. Amanda picks up her bag and storms out. Oh, all right. Well, somebody hates us today. I haven't seen her act like this in a long time, usually short-lived, but it always hurts. Hopefully this blows over and things are back to normal soon. Or, or, we could be a good parent, snoop through her stuff, figure it out ourselves, and then gaslight her. Oh, just my parents? Oh, okay, anyways, moving on. I sit back at the kitchen table and look at a picture of Amanda and I hanging on a wall. In it, I'm teaching her to ride a bike. Her face is a mixture of excitement and pure, unadulterated fear. I remember how determined she was. Every time she would fall off and scrape her knees, she would get back up and try it again. Finally, I had to stop her because she was bleeding everywhere. And then she started to cry because she didn't think she needed bandages and wanted to keep trying. I mean, she can keep trying. Let's just not have her bleed all over the neighborhood. As I put the bike away, she just stood in the middle of the street and screamed. Then I took her for ice cream and it was like nothing even happened. I mean, that's good parenting. Ice cream solves everything. After giving it a bit of thought, I decided that if I force her to talk about it, I'm only going to make things worse. But I have an idea. There we go. Go through her stuff. Let's go through her stuff. I start rummaging around for ingredients. Oh, oh, di different rummaging. Okay. Ingredients. I hear Amanda walk in the door. Instead of heading for the kitchen like she usually does, she makes a beeline for her room. She's clearly trying to avoid me. Hey, pumpkin. What? Can you come here for a sec? There's a moment of silence. Yeah. Wanted to say sorry about last night. I'm just worried about you, kiddo. I get scared when I know something's wrong, and I don't even get more scared when I feel like I can't do anything about it. Dad, I... I swear this better not be your pregnant. I am a single father trying to find you another father. I can't handle this right now. We just moved here. I just started dating again. So just... Whatever it is, and you don't have to tell me if you don't want to. Whatever it is, just know that you have your dad in your corner who wants to, you to be happy. Mm. Honey... You know, I'm bad with words, so I was hoping I could speak a language we both understand. I pull a cake out of the refrigerator and place it on the table. Hopefully the frosting is set by now. Ta-da! Dad. Oh, God. Oh, God. You're running away. You're eloping. No. It took me nearly a long... Uh, it took me a really long time because I ran out of red frosting somewhere around sad and had to start over. Sorry you were sad, but I support you 100%. A for effort, RNG. A for effort. This is beautiful. Oh, there we go. We got a smile. We got a smile. And we didn't rummage through her shit. I told you we should not go through her stuff snooping. Bake her cake. I said it. Roll back the tape. It's strawberry. It looks artificial. Amanda gives me a big old hug. I grab some plates and forks and serve us up some delicious cake. So it's really stupid. What is? The whole thing. I know I've been really weird lately. There's just... I don't even know how to explain it. I feel like I might have to make you a chart. I'm listening. Do you want me to take notes? Oh. 
I guess I should start from the top. So, you know how MLR is going to the fancy art school in California, right? Oh, it's a puppy. Oh, it's a puppy. Hang on. All right. If you guys don't know, the puppy comes in for treats during Twitch live streams, and we have a giant puppy cam that we put on. So, unfortunately, I don't have that for the YouTube setup. Uh, so, we'll give puppy a treat during a YouTube video for once. The first ever. Okay. Can't take it. Oh, boy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, like I said, link my Twitch down below if you want to see Puppy get treats live. Come check us out. Anyways, I guess I should start from the top. We already read that fancy art school in California, right? Yeah, I remember. Mr. The one who puked in Dead Goth and Beyond. <laughs> the best friend. The other one. I'm going with Dead Goth and Beyond. I love that store. My favorite. Dad, that was me. What? I thought you were MP. Dad, are you okay? I'm getting <laughs> legit worried. I've been doing a lot of gluing and varnishing and unavailable spaces. Carry on. Be getting high. Anyways, ever since she got accepted uh, acceptance letter, I've been feeling like she's drifting away, you know? She's been spending a lot more time with Grace and Emma P. I just thought it was all in my head for a while, but then I found out from Rose, Rosie M that both Emma, Grace, and Noah all went to a party at Mackenzie F's. On the same night, they all told me they were busy studying for the Calc AB final. Bitches. Petty ass bitches. Yikes. Mm. So another important piece of information is, uh, God, this is embarrassing. I, uh, I have a crush on Noah and that's a thing. What, 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 whoa, whoa, I had no idea. I definitely did not know that. Okay. You're a bad liar. We did go through her stuff. I told you chat. We shouldn't go through her stuff. So are you. I learned from the worst. Mm. Anyways. So the only person I told about the crush is I'm a R and she promised to tell anybody. I didn't confront them about it. The party thing because I didn't want to start drama, so I just kept quiet and going about my business. Amanda sighs. And then one day I invite everybody out to get nachos at, at the mall after not texting me back for like two hours, even though none of them ever put their phones down for more than like 60 seconds. They all say they're busy like simultaneously. So I tell them, never mind, I'll just eat nachos at home, right? But we were out of chips and I really wanted nachos. Totally understandable. I'd get I'd get very upset. But buddy, I I am recording YouTube right now. I am I am in the middle of something here. <laughs> Hi, buddy. Yes, I love this. It's totally understandable. So I just go to the mall. I go to the food court, and who do I see there? Grace, Emma P, Emma R, and Noah all hanging out together and eating nachos without me. What? I know, right, bitches? It gets better. I'm standing by the escalator watching them, and I realize that Noah has his arm around Emma R, which is kind of weird, right? But then they kiss. I know. No, yes, I know. So I storm over there. I'm like, hey. And Grace drops a nacho on her shirt because, of course, she does. And Emma R just, like, glares at me. Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know what. Wait, Grace, Grace, nothing is coming up. I don't know who that is. Grace is the boring one, the gossipy one. Did she poop the bed, too? I'm going to go gossipy because the last answer was kind of off. Hmm. I know. I'm a good dad. What can I say? Grace is the one nobody really likes. Or I just... Or I guess that's me now. But anyway, nobody will say anything. And I'm just like, you guys suck. Which I realize is the most eloquent thing to say. But I was very angry and really embarrassed. And I just wanted to get out of there. So I left. Without nachos, might I add. Which only further contributed to the shitty day. And immediately drafted a super long text to the group chat. Asking them why they've been so weird. And I wrote another one to MR asking how long the Noah thing's been going on. And sorry, I know it's a lot. You still following? I'm a little confused, but I think I understand. I have no idea. No, I think I got it. I think I got it. She told MR she liked Noah. MR stole Noah and then cut her out of the friend group. I got it. We're good. What did MR say? Oh, okay. Get a load of this. MR says, you know what? Let me just read it to you. Amanda pulls her phone out and reads word for word absurdly long string of text messages. Mm. Can you believe that? I I cannot believe that. I care so much about Amanda's social life and mental well-being, but man, do I not understand what she's talking about? This is all beyond me, and I'm trying the hardest to be supportive. I can understand it. Why are we struggling in game? I can understand it. Uh. They were dating in secret for like months. Wow. So I told her she's been a really terrible friend, and she's like, well, if you think I'm so terrible, and then stop being my friend, I was like, okay. And then she left me on red. And then, wait, left me on red. What's that? RNG, you need to catch up. 
Oh, like she saw my message, didn't reply, and I know because there are re read receipts. Wait, chat. Quick question: Anyone who's watching this video, do you have your read receipts on? Because I only do that with my wife. Other than that, I don't put them on. You can avoid so many issues and get out of so many things if you keep your read receipts off. Just, just saying. I know what. Uh, I don't know what read receipts are, but I'm just gonna nod and pretend I understand. Gotcha. So while this is all happening, I'm talking to Emma P about how mad I am. Because she's at least uh, being kind of reasonable, and I'm venting to her about how pissed I am at everybody and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Noah texts me. is like, how could you say that about me? And I'm like, say what about you? And she tells me that MLP sent screenshots of everything I told her to the group chat uh, that I got kicked out of. All right, I think you lost me screenshots, but definitely sounds bad. There's so much more, but honestly, it's all just really stupid teenager stuff. The bottom line is that everybody dropped me. Half of my grade hates me, and now I have no friends. I guess I'll go eat where? Never mind. That was a bad joke. Moving on. Amanda, I'm sorry. I almost expected it from everybody else, but Emma R, she's been there uh, since dad died. I can't believe she would just stab me in the back like that. I'm not even mad that she's dating Noah. I'm just upset that she lied to me about it for so long. Amanda stabs at the remnants of her cake. Okay, I take it back. I'm kind of mad she's dating Noah. There it is. It's all right. We'll go fuck her dad. Yeah, sounds like a good plan. Like, what did I do wrong? Should we go Noah's dad? Wait, well, anyways, we'll figure it out. What did everyone just suddenly decide? I'm not cool anymore? Why wasn't I enough? I don't understand. And as mad as I am at everybody, like, I miss them, dad. Amanda looks uh, so dejected, I almost can't take it. What can I possibly say to help? Oh, no. Anyways, that's it. That's the whole uh, sorted, sorted tale. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for more hot gossip. Listen, Amanda, I'm going to go sleep with both their fathers. Make them fall in love with me, and then take them out of their dream school. I got you. We're not gonna let the, we're not gonna let this this not go unavenged. We got this. Wow. I know it's pretty dumb. It's not dumb. No, it's stupid. It, it's a stupid thing to be upset over. No, it's not. It's your friend. They backstabbed you. Amanda, your feelings are real. Don't ever be mad at yourself for having feelings. I guess. See, we're sensitive. Unless you've secretly been a robot who's been approximating human feelings this whole time. That's a possibility, too. Yeah, if I was a robot, I would have transformed into a monster truck a long time ago. She's our daughter. She's our daughter. Anyways, but seriously, I know you probably don't want advice, but I feel like it's my duty as a dad to bestow upon you a few nuggets of fatherly wisdom. Not all friendships last forever. Real friends don't do that. High school sucks. High school sucks. Honey, high school sucks. You make friends with people who just because they're there. When you're all still living in your hometown, that's a pretty small pool of people to choose from. Once you go to college and once you get out into the real world, you're going to be... I'm sorry. You're going to be exposed to all the sorts of people and it's going to be easier to make friends with people uh, who really get you. Some of those friendships can last a lifetime. I mean, look at me and Craig. Some of them only last a little while and that's okay too. You're going to make so many awesome new friends at art school. Ultimately, I think this says way more about their character than it does about yours. Because you're amazing, and if they can't see that, well, that's their problem. Huh. I'll keep that in mind. Yes, good dad point number two. We baked a cake, and we gave fatherly advice. Who wouldn't want me as a dad? I looked down at the table. Did we just eat the whole cake? Yeah, yeah, we did. <laughs> yes, we did just eat the whole cake. Well, good talk. Amanda gets up from to go to her room. Before she closes the door, she turns around. Hey, Pops. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. You're always welcome. Love you, Manda. Love, love you too, Dad. All right. You got dads. All right. Holy heck! All right. We'll see. What does Craig want? Hello, Manda's dad. Okay, it's his kids again. It's me, your friend Craig, who loves sports. I have a, neat, uh, have a nice, smart children who are good at computers. Ah, uh, man, great to hear from you, buddy. What's up? I'm still strong. It's misspelled. Still strong. I'm strong. I'm sure you are, huh? I don't know it. Say, I've been reading up uh, about whey protein. You use that at all? I figure it would help me develop a bit more muscle. Yes, I know what that is. My children are having a tea party and they want to invite Amanda, but we can't find her on here. You're also invited. Oh, that's very sweet of them. Physical invitation to follow. Cool. I'd love to come. I'll let Amanda know. Thank you, Amanda's dad. All right, we got this one. Dad book. RNG, listen. This is you from the past. Whoa, how'd this happen? I figure you're trying to reply to this because I know myself, but this is an automated message from you earlier this morning. DB me. Uh, when it was socially acceptable to go out and buy ice cream. I forgot I did that. I forgot how I did that as well. 
The future is amazing. Listen, if life is short and ice cream should always be acceptable, but unfortunately this isn't the society we live in. And it's less society we live in and more me projecting my own anxiety about being judged onto others, but I know what I mean. By the time you're reading this, it is a certain time of day in which nobody will bat an eye at you and going out for air and buying ice cream. You know what to do. Go be, <laughs> go be good to me. Okay. All right. All right. Let me double check which dads. I know it was Damien, Matt. I think it was Robert. Yeah. So trying to see. We're going to go on a date right now. We could... I don't want to go on a date with Hugo. Hugo, okay, so to update anybody who hasn't been here for the first half of uh, when I stream this on Twitch, Joseph reminds me of a serial killer. Brian is rude as hell. Uh, came over trying to flex his house and everything on me, and I'm just... I'm just not about that life. Uh, so chat voted that we continue with Robert. Uh, kind of Damien interested me, and Matt and I vibe, Okay. Got piercings, like music. Uh, so those are the three dads we're going to go after. Craig's a good dude. Hugo's pretty cool. I hate his kid. Um, but we decided these are the three finalists. So with that, I think we're going to go on a date with Robert today. All right. Here we go. I had a lot of fun with Robert last time we hung out, but I'm beginning to wonder if he's dodging me. I've tried messaging him a few times, and Dadbook says he hasn't even read them. I haven't seen him, in a, uh, him come out of his house, actually. I decided to send him one last message, figuring this would produce the same result. He's left us on red. Hey, man, don't know who you've been, but you should grab a drink soon. I walk away from my computer, because at this point, I know he's not messaging me back anytime soon. I linger in the kitchen. I'm all caught up on work. The house is relatively clean. Maybe I should do something nice for Amanda. We just baked her a cake. We don't need to be the dad of the century. Dad of the day was good enough for me. I'll bake her her favorite pie. Okay, we're baking again. I root through the pantry and pull out all the ingredients. Uh, this is an old family recipe that I used to make with my grandmother when I was a kid. I lost the actual recipe card a long time ago, but I think I'll be able to remember how to bake it. I start making family recipe and we lost it. Okay, we're, we're, we're good. Starting to make the ingredients together for the crust until I get a nice dough. I throw some cherries into a saucepan to make the filling. Oh, damn, we can cook. Normally, I don't like to multitask in the kitchen, but this is cherry pie. Is a piece of cake. Pie? It's a piece of pie. Piece of pie! Making a pie. Remember, pie chat. Ah, oh, man, I can never remember what temperature you're supposed to set the oven at. I'm pretty sure it's 375, but I could be wrong. Probably 400. Who am I kidding? I'm never wrong when it comes to this pie. A special twist on Grandma's special recipe includes a, she, the, includes a secret ingredient that not even Amanda knows about. It's whiskey. It's, it really makes cherries extra flavorable. God, why can't I remember the secret ingredient is? More cherries, salt, almond extract. I'm going to guess almond ac extract. I don't think it's more cherries. Oh, it's almond ac extract. Duh. Oops, I accidentally poured a little too much in. Way too much. I'm sure it's fine. Baking is an art, and some of the most beautiful art is made from mistakes. This is going to be disgusting. I get the pie in the oven. How long am I supposed to leave it in there? 15 minutes? Ah, I'll just wing it. We're gonna burn. We're gonna burn down the house. Ben is gonna be so excited. This kid loves a good pie. I have a seat at the kitchen table. Dude, word jumbles until Amanda comes home. I can hear the door slam open. Yo, pops, what smells like pie in here? It's pie, sweetie. Amanda darts over to the oven and looks inside. Yeah. Yes. Hey, it's not done. Be patient. Mm. What's your angle here? Ah. Mm. Pies are an objective based confection. What are you trying to get out of me? Fine, you caught me. Nothing. I've been leading a double life. Double life. Amanda, I have terrible news for you. I'm actually a pro skateboarder and an aspiring astronaut and a bank robber. The life sale is calling me back and I must go. One last job. You know how it is. This pie was the only way I knew how to tell you. Well, I appreciate the years we spent together, but a trade-up is a trade-up. Remember me when you're kick, uh, kicking your feet up in Ibiza. Yeah. Thanks for all the pie. We, <laughs> we share a cordial handshake. I wait a few more minutes before taking the pie out of the oven. I set it on a rack to cool and guard it so Amanda doesn't dig into it before it's ready. Mm. Huh? What? Mm. Does it look kind of weird to you? Oh, no. oh, we botched it. Oh, that's just just me taking artistic license of what cherry pie means to me emotionally. I'm just saying this because, you know, it seems like you might have baked this pie incorrectly. And you are currently right now trying to pass off as a good thing. Mm. It's art, sweetie. You wouldn't understand. Was it art when you accidentally baked a whole uncracked egg into the center of my 12th birthday cake? Yes. 
uh, have you ever not heard of a sushi egg? Well, it's... Was it art when you tried to make brownies and accidentally created chlorine gat? Okay. I was also trying to kill the neighbor. Okay. Shh, shh. Don't tell the police. You're being a little judgy for somebody who's about to get free cake or pie. Hi. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. Was it art when you just eat the pie, Panda? Mm -hmm. I cut us a few slices. We sit down. The cherry filling oozes out of the side. And the buttery crust glistens. I watch Amanda take oh. a bite. Whoa. What's wrong? Is it not good? Amanda winces and fans her mouth. No, oh, no, I just burned the heck out of the my mouth. This pie is amazing. This is the pie voice when you burn your mouth. Sorry for doubting you. Yeah. I breathe a sigh of relief and take a bite. She's right. The pie is pretty incredible, as it always is, because I'm good. I'm really proud of you for making a pie without burning the new house down. Rude. I got a few dad tricks up my sleeve. Yeah. That was rude. Maybe fathers aren't as bubbling and stupid as the media makes us out to be. Maybe we as a society should have a little more respect for fathers as a whole. Huh? Dad, your sleeve is on fire. I run to the sink to put myself up. How did, how did I light my sleeve on fire on the couch? Oh. Amanda and I clean up the kitchen, play a little more living room hoops. Before she retreats her room to do homework, I go back to my word jumbles. Uh, hey, this one spells cat. The rest of the evening trickles by. We eat dinner. I help Amanda with one of her scholarship applications. We both start getting ready for bed. I decided to check dad book one last time before I climb into bed. Still nothing from Robert, huh? Hope he's okay. I turn out the lights and lie down. Easy date. Oh, come on. It's three in the morning. Hey, RNG. Hey, hey, RNG. Hey, I'm outside. Come outside. Oh, what's that? I just got on the verge of falling asleep. I climb out of bed. Try to identify the source of the dinghy. My computer screen illuminates the dark room. I walk over to it. Hey, you up? I walk over to it. Re re ready to turn it off? When I notice something's happening on the screen. Don't make me honk. I will honk. Get out here. I got my window sharing off. Robert's leaning up against his pickup truck in my driveway. Wait, Robert drives a pickup? I no. He looks like a beat up Camaro, dude. I finally open my door and try to figure out what's going on. Hey. Hey. Oh. Wanna hang? It. I was going to bed. It's kind of sleeping. Uh -huh. That's no fun. Uh -huh. Come hang out. I would argue that sleeping is very fun, but I don't have anywhere to be in the morning. Might as well live a little. Sure. Cool. You plan on going out like that? I look down and realize I'm, in fact, not wearing pants. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't mind. Right. One second. I mean, one in Rome, right? I run inside and throw on my going out pants, shoes, and a jacket. I grab my keys and meet Robert back outside. Ready? Ready. Mm -hmm. Hop in. Well, that was sensual. That mm -hmm, was a little bit more than I was expecting. I jump into the passenger seat of his old red pickup truck. I have to move a few empty cigarette packs and gas station receipts out of the way before I can sit. Robert stay, silently starts the car and we drive out of the cul-de-sac. Hey. You like Tom Watts? Tom Waits? Tom Waits, yeah. Tom Waits. Tom who? Voice that rag, baby. Uh, all right, Are we trying to impress him? Let's go with this one. All right, we got some hearts. I Before I can answer, Robert turns up the radio. Yep, that's Tom Waits, all right. He lets a cigarette, cracks the window. We drive together in silence. Where are we going? This is usually when I wake up in three hours and my kidneys are gone. Robert doesn't respond. Yeah, we're getting a kidney removed. Robert? Oh, I heard you. He still doesn't answer my question. I look out the window and notice that Robert's taking us to the highway. I twiddle my thumbs. Well, whatever I got myself into, it looks like I'm in for the night. I settle into my seat and watch streetlights pass by. I glance over to Robert, who's driving intently. He looks tired, as he always does, but there's something a bit more there I just can't place. Love the, the dinosaur sticker, the hula. This is actually not a bad inside of the truck, you know? Parking tickets. Looks average. Are you okay? I like your car. I'm going to say nothing. Holy hell, Robert does not like a talker. Okay. Throw those aubergines. Uh, remember what Robert said about hating small talk and decided to keep my mouth shut? Oh, God, I completely forgot about that. Mm. He notices me staring. Mm. Stop looking so nervous. No, not so you promise you're not taking my kidneys. Not nervous. I'm a little nervous. Oh. Just hang on. We're almost there. Almost where? I have no idea where we are. I think we're moving at a slight incline, but I'm not sure. We eventually come to a stop. Robert gets out of the car and I can sit for a second. Unsure if he wants me to get out, too. What are you waiting for? I hastily exit the car. Robert sits on the bed of his truck, pats the space next to him. Okay. We're going to watch the sunrise. 
I sit down and take in the view. We're on a hill overlooking the city skyline against the bay. The cool night air rustles some uh, trees near us as lights blink in the distance. Off to the side, I can see an entrance to a dense forest. And it's all so gorgeous. This is where I come to masturbate. Well, that's a little forward. Was not expecting that. What? Oh. I'm kidding. What's wrong with you? Oh. My little spot where I come to think. And come. It's nice. Oh. <laughs> you can see the whole city from up here. I can see that. Really gives you some perspective. Robert reaches behind and pulls him something out from under his jacket. It glints in the moonlight. I suddenly realize what it is. Whiskey. Uh -huh. Oh shit, that's a knife. Never mind, it's a knife. <laughs> this is not going the way I'm predicting at all. Oh, please don't stab me. Told you, kidneys were getting them removed. Robert reaches into his pocket, pulls out a small piece of wood. Please don't stab me with that either. <laughs> Robert takes a knife, the piece of wood, and starts carving at it. Oh, I breathe this audible uh, sigh of relief as Robert looks at me sideways. Do you think I was going to stab you just now? Yeah, I kind of thought you were going to take my kidneys. What? No. Oh. Hate to break it to you, but I did, in fact, bring you out here to harvest your... Fucking called it! I called that. Listen. Just leave me with one kidney. You take the other one, we split the profits. But I, I called that. Play along. Yeah, well, you think that you caught me? You caught me in a trap, but I knew. For years, I've been putting the most vile junk in my body in preparation for this day. Come at me, bro. And reap what you will. Two steps ahead of you at all times. That's how I operate. Robert likes it. All right, we're, we're cruising today. Nothing gets past you, huh? Robert reaches his pocket, pulls out a folding knife, and he opens and hands it to me. I'm going to warn you, the last guy I had a knife fight with lost three fingers because he didn't know the eight basic rules of knife fighting. You are familiar, correct? I honestly can't tell you when you're kidding. I'm so levels of irony deep that I've forgotten what humor is. He and I laugh. Have you ever whittled before? Nope. Considering I'm not a grandpa, no. What do you mean by that? Well, I just thought that you would have a block of wood shipped to you along with your first social security check. Mm. RNG, I'll have you know it. Whittling is a time-honored tradition enjoyed by both young and old alike. That you are dismissing it before you've even tried it speaks volumes about your character. You took me to top of the hill with a knife and my character's in question? However, because I've gotten to know you for some time and have come to think of you as friends, I'm willing to attribute it to arrogant ignorance instead of malice. Thank you. Oh. What I'm trying to say is, go get that stick. What do you mean, go get that stick? Is that your way of saying, go get your wood? Anyways, moving on. Robert motions to a good-looking stick on the, on the ground. Perfect for potential whittling. I pick it up. Huh. Most important thing is to remember, while whittling is to cut with the grain, not against it. If you cut against the grain, the wood is going to splinter. Isn't the most important thing safety? I... That's the second most important thing, obviously. Oh. No. Getting hurt comes with the territory. Look at my damn hands. Look at his hands. They're callous, covered in uh, little white scars. They're very nice hands. Oh. Can't make a stick omelet without breaking a few hand eggs. What? Knife that wood. What? Okay. <laughs> Gonna turn it. Okay, I think we're making a toothpick. Good start. Sharp stick, pencil, knitting needle. Uh, pencil. Good luck writing with that. You made a highly dangerous weapon. Hey, hey, we made a shank. Are we doing this again? Gonna turn the wood. Turn the wood. Wait, cut with the grain. Popsicle stick. It's a tongue depressor. I should put that in my first aid kit. Never know when you might need it. Why would you need a tongue depressor? Robert, what are you doing on weekends? All right, we're going to do a third stick. All right, I'm really good at whittling. It, this is a toothpick. Bubble popper. Not to push your bubble, but there aren't any bubbles around here. Oh, there is. Are we done with whittling yet? Because I can't keep making things. Are we making another? I made an egg. Chicken nugget. Please don't eat that. No, I'm going to eat it. You cannot tell me not to put that wood in my mouth. 
Ro you made Robert uncomfortable. Yes. All right. Last one, right? This, this has got to be the last one. We're just going to be gentle with it. Oh. Oh, never mind. We fucked that up. This is a dino nugget. Self-portrait. It's you. Oh, we'll, we'll do self-portrait. Spitting image of you. Robert, you're a dick. You made a masterpiece. Yo. Looks like... Uh. All right. Hang on. Careful. Oh, we, we botched it again. I'll just finish it. Is it chopstick lefty chopstick lefty no ambidextrous both hands can use this it's a stick what are you whittling what if i glue these all together all right we're doing another one this is a big piece of wood we're hand handling um uh remember with the grain Swan, duck, new friend, duck. Maybe next time you can carve up some wooden bread crust to feed it to him. Bat. All right, how many of these do we got to whittle? Got to do another one. Turn this. Okay, definitely. Definitely not wood. I'm... The Trojan horse. We're, we're whittling, we're whittling a condom. Big old dog, the spirit, and a Mustang. A Sir Heisington the Brave. Horsington the Brave. A brave and noble name for a brave noble creature. <coughs> Gift for Amanda. Oh, that's it. We actually did really good. All right, good. I was like, if we keep whittling at this point, we might as well open a wood store. Robert and I sit in silence for a while, carving out of our piece of wood. I think I'm getting the hang of this. I actually kind of relaxing. I glance over to see what Robert's working on. He's carving a smaller wooden knife. While I'm distracted, the knife slices into my thumb. Blood gushes all over my little wooden carving. Um, You got that first aid kit you were talking about? Robert's lost in carving. Doesn't notice me bleeding everywhere. Rub it on his face. Rub it on his face. <laughs> Robert still doesn't notice. Robert, I'm dying. I'm bleeding to death. Robert finally looks over. Reaches into his jacket again. Jesus, how much stuff does this guy keep in there? Pulls out a red bandana, wraps it around my thumb. Hold tight. Hops off the track. I hear him running around his car. He comes back a moment later with a well-stocked forsaken. Okay. Carefully wipes all the blood off my hand. Swipes a bit of antiseptic onto the cut with surprising gentleness. He places a bit of gauze on the wound and wraps it all up. Mm -hmm. Oh, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. Hands me what's left of the tube of antiseptic. Mm -hmm. Make sure to keep that cut clean. It's oddly touching and a little sexy. He knows how to take care of people when they're bleeding. Yeah. Okay, let's move. I guess I'm really a whittler now. Huh. That you are. Be careful, though. They are attracted to the smell of blood. Wait, what? what's attracted to the smell of blood? Mm. Cryptids. Tons of them out here, you know. There, there it is. Cryptids like Mothman and stuff. Yeah. Mothman is bullshit. But yeah, this town is a hotbed of cryptos, cryptozoology. All right. Go ahead and make fun of me in the comments. Cryptozoological occurrences you're joking mm. oh how i wish i were i'm skeptic myself or at least i thought it was there are things in these woods that we can't possibly comprehend actually i don't think he's lying i think about my entire time in the city aside from the occasional stray coyote i don't think it's too bad mm. you ever heard of the dover ghost i don't think so oh. well let me tell you a story i was out in the woods here on a weekend camping a camping trip with betsy you know you don't know betsy she's a big pup Pitbull, real intimidating. I feel safe around her. First night goes without an instant. I let some solitude. I get some solitude. Betsy gets to pee wherever she wants. All good stuff. Second day, I get the idea into my head that I can hike deeper into the woods. Probably against my better judgment, but hey, we're just having a fun camping trip, right? So me and Betsy start marching in the morning. It's a little late. We set up camp, but it's different this night. Real quiet. Can't hear birds, the crickets, squirrels, nothing. Dead silent. Then it happens. I hear the most un unholy growl I've ever heard in my life. We're right outside my tent. Me and Betsy, we go to investigate. Look around. The clearing. Nobody's there. So there's this feeling. Not sure if I can describe, describe it. I know someone, something is watching us. Betsy, though, she's scared. Never seen her like that. And she's actually, uh, when she's scared, I know that I should be too. And then I see it in the distance. A man. But something that didn't know what a man was supposed to look like made it 
just looked wrong. Big arms, too long for his body, black eyes. Just stood there and stared at me. Then it disappears. I hear one yelp from Pepsi. I turn around to check on her, but she's gone. Into thin air. I didn't sleep in, at all in the tent. I don't think I've ever slept right since. Where'd Betsy go? It's terrible. Wow. Robert? Oh. I'm so sorry. Oh. They say that if you listen closely on quiet nights, just like tonight, you can still hear the howl of the Dover ghost. A howl resonates through the woods. It doesn't sound like a regular howl. It's so guttural. Even from far away, something about it makes my skin crawl. Okay. Okay. Let's go. I think it's time to go. Huh? Welcome to an indie horror playthrough of, uh, Hey, Robert, real funny. I turn to look at Robert. He's white as, uh, white as a sheet. You're messing with me, right? Huh? I'm messing with you up until literally just now. I totally made that camping story up. Train my eyes to scan the forest line, trying to see where the howl came from. Off in the distance, I see something. So far away, we can barely make out a shape. It looks human, but it's dragging something. Um, do you see that? <sighs> we should go. Yeah, that's what I was saying like two minutes ago. Let's go. Robert, I slowly back away and get into the truck. He turns off his headlights and we make the slow crawl back onto the road. Too scared to look back. What was that? Huh? The Dover ghost, I guess. I chuckle nervously this time. He doesn't seem like he's messing with me. Or maybe someone illegally dumping garbage on wildlife preserve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the story we'll tell ourselves. It's a good story. I'm, I'm believing it right now. We sit in silence for a little while longer. The fear of whatever that was slowly subsiding as we get closer to the city. I... Thanks for coming out. This was fun. I'm so sorry I haven't been in touch. I've just been in a way been in been in a way lately. I had to get out of the house. Mm -hmm. Had to be around somebody. You're doing okay, man? Mm -hmm. Robert thinks for a second, lights another cigarette. Hey. Been doing a lot of thinking. Takes a long drag. As I get older, I feel more and more that I'm just drowning in the sea of regret. I was so busy chasing after the things I thought would make me happy that I didn't think about anyone else. All I cared about was myself. I didn't even think. Hey. Robert stops, away from to finish his thought, but he stares at the road. Maybe I'm just built like this, or maybe I do it to myself. Maybe it's my own choice that I'm as unhappy as I am. I try to think of something to say. I remember all the times in my life when I've sad, and there's a great many of them. But there was always light at the end of the tunnel, something I held onto that kept me going. But there's something so resigned about the way Robert's talking. Maybe we deserve to get eaten by the Dover ghost. I'm glad you told me that sucks. <laughs> I'm going to be, I'm going to be a little altruistic here. It might've taken a lot of you to want to tell somebody this. You're a mysterious guy, Robert. You don't have to be. Do you ever wish you were a better father? Yeah, constantly. I mean, look how mad it turned out. I could have been better. Could have been worse. I think about it for a second. All the time you can read all the parenting books you want, but nothing will ever prepare you for raising a child. There's so much stuff I regret or wish that I could have done. Better, but I don't know the answers. I don't know if anyone does. It's funny. I look at you and your relationship with your daughter and it seems perfect. It's not. It isn't. Oh, all right. Well, thank you for answering for me. At least you're there for her. I stare outside the window at the blur of passing trees. I just hope I'm a better father to my kid than my dad was to me. That's all you can ever do. Hmm. What did your dad do? It's more about what he didn't do. He was quiet, stoic. Didn't think ever once told me that he loved me. He cared more about his work than he ever did about me or my mom. Uh. You hate him? Now, I used to, but after I became a parent, I just kind of feel bad for him. He missed out on my whole childhood when I think about all the happiest moments of my life. They're all with Amanda and Alex, and he just wasn't there. It hurt like hell when I had to leave him uh, leave him to die in that <laughs> Belarusian prison. What? I turned a smile at him. No, he's retired in Florida with my mom. We go there every Christmas. Let's go. The aubergines again. We both break out into laughter. He pats me on the shoulder. We drive the rest of the way in silence, listening to the radio and watching the bright lights of the city grow bigger. Robert drops me off at my place. As I'm about to close the passenger door, I realize I still have Robert's pocket knife in my jacket. I pull it out and offer it back to him. Hold on to that. Never know when you might need it. Nice, Robert. Uh, night, Robert. Have a safe drive home. It's like three houses. Robert smirks and pulls away. He then immediately pulls into his driveway, which is one. Of, what did I say? One, two, three. Three houses. Don't fucking listen to me. He gets out and waves. I tiptoe into the house, careful not to wake Amanda. She's going to be on the couch, isn't she? Whoa, where'd you come from? Don't worry about it. Huh? Look around, spot Amanda coming out of the kitchen with a glass of water. Mm -hmm. I thought you were sleeping. Uh, Robert woke me up to go out cryptid hunting. Yeah. You know the mountain, <laughs> the mouth man is bullshit, right? Amanda, Link. Yeah, you know what? It's fine. 
Think about the conversation I had with Robert in the car and Amanda starts walking towards her room. Hey, Amanda. Huh. She stops. I love you. Hmm? It's weird when you say it outright and sincerely like that, but I love you too. Night. I chuckled to myself and then finally decided to go to bed. All right. It was a good date with Robert. Uh, for the most part, I still think he would harvest our kidneys if given the chance. But we are going to call it there for this video. But please, guys, make sure. Hang on. Make sure you guys rank ass. Let's go. A little bit of let's play. Let's go. Sorry. But make sure you guys come back. We're going to go on another date, either with Damien or Matt on the next uh, episode. And we're going to keep going this down until we pick a final dad to date. Um, but make sure you guys, if you like this content, make sure you leave a comment. Give it a thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button, turn the bell on so you know when I post more content, whether it's going to be indie horror games, Dead by Daylight content, or Dream Daddy Dating Simulator. Uh, but make sure you guys come back out and we're putting this out a little bit more. Uh, probably put it into its own little nice little folder, easy to find. And uh, just follow along for the rest of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye. Stay random.